welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Um, I've been away, as you know, and um, on the trip to America, we were using, among other things from Leupold, Leupold uh, binoculars and laser rangefinders. Now, I am now back in the UK, and I've received the set from the US so that I can do the full review here. But actually, I think I've covered most of the pertinent facts already. So I'm going to put together some of the footage that I used on the trip away, along with some descriptions of these items here, and tell you about my personal input. So look in the description below and you'll see all the details about both items. But this is my opinion of what I've done. It's not just about reading off a list. There for rest. I think they might have shot it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I was giving them a First thing we're going to cover, this box has come from Viking Arms, which means you get Haribo. We'll deal with those later. Just pop those out of the way. So what is in the box? We have got rangefinders, we have got binoculars. So let's just uh, store these carefully. What do you want to do first? Rangefinders, binoculars, rangefinders. Let's do binoculars first. So these are... These are Leupold BX4 Pro Guide HD and they are 10 by 42 roof prism binoculars. Now, this is a style of binocular you'll have seen me use a lot. It's a very, very popular sort of run of the mill specification. Um, it fits a lot of scenarios. Some people would learn like an 8 by 42, but I do like a 10 by 42 because I tend to be more out and about, longer range stuff, wide open spaces. So, what do we get in the box? In the box, we've got a neck strap. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and we've got a Cordura case here. And within that are the binoculars. So we've got a user guide, some binoculars. And out they come. So, just take the eye cap off there, silica patch off there. So, 10 by 42 roof prism binoculars. We've got front lens caps there, and then that will go on the rear, that will come off, and then the next strap when I put it together, that will hang off there. You've got independently adjustable eyepieces here, so you've got, from those, you've got one, two, three, three positions on those for extension. Those are heavily rubberized for easy grip. Now these binoculars, I'd say the ProGuide 10 by 42s these are about 800 pounds RRP. But I was actually struck quite quite immediately. I mean, I, I use some very expensive binoculars. I use them quite frequently. These didn't let me down at all. I was very, very pleased using them. And I'll tell you why. You've got independent eyepiece diopter there to you know, cover the imbalance between your two eyes. And then on the top here, you've got a really nice, smooth, very delightfully textured rubberized focusing dial, which is totally finger adjustable. Stays in position beautifully. And it's really, really nice to use. Now the units themselves are very light. That's in the specifications, which I'll put below. But you've got all the rubberized finish here, so it's easily gripped. It doesn't get slippery, you don't drop them at all. And of course on a roof prism binocular this size, your finger's kind of wrapped in there anyway. So you're not gonna lose it. And of course it's also on a neck strap too. So just ignoring that for one second. Low light capability, which we didn't test that much, but it was perfectly accessible and I didn't feel as if I was missing out on anything when we were shooting. I used these on a particular trip out for a pronghorn antelope but, and also for a long afternoon of spotting prairie dogs. Now a prairie dog is about that tall and it can sit anywhere between 20 and you know a thousand meters away we didn't shoot any super long ones we were shooting out to about 225 240 meters maximum but you get the idea of what we were looking for now i'm putting a bit of footage of me using these because i found them very relaxing to use and you know my eyes aren't as good as they used to be and i like the fact that you know you can very quickly change the eye cut position depending on whether you lay down or standing up and exactly how much spacing you want from your eyes and of course they just sit around your neck they're not heavy and the focal control was excellent because it was very easy just to just pop in, grab the binocular, get the focus you need, then swap to the rifle and use them. Now, that's really my personal opinion of a binocular. And the less I say about them sometimes, that means the better. You've got two bridges, it's going to be solid, it's going to last a lifetime, and they've got a great loophole warranty. That binocular case is a nice little feature. It's got just enough padding just to protect them. Those will pop back in there. And then you've got an elasticated clip that goes over the top like that. You can also cinch that down tight if you want it. And you've got belt loops on the back. 
I'll put those together at some point and you'll be using these loads, but essentially that's my opinion of them so far. Um, I'll leave those for the minute. Right, the range finders, these were very impressive. These are the 2800s, what's here? Yeah, TR, sorry, RX 2800 TBR, which means true ballistic range. Now, essentially, what these do is, as well as range finding, they take in inclination and declination, as well as your chosen ballistic um, setup, in which they have several on the menu. Again, I'll put all the details in the description for this one because I'm more interested in giving you my personal opinion of them. So, these pop out the side here. There's a battery included, it says. I possibly ought to mention, actually, I think these binoculars, they're not made in China, these are made in Japan. I think it says on them, but I think that's worth pointing out because it gives you an immediate idea. If you look on the bottom here, it does say they are made in Japan, which is a, you know, an immediate mark of quality on them. Right, so looking at the rangefinders, these are the RX 2800 TBRs. TBR stands for True Ballistic Range. Now that essentially means that depending on the inclination, declination of your shot uphill downhill, it will tally that data into your ballistic solution and give you an exact readout. And it will give you an exact readout in terms of whether you want it in clips, in milliradians, in minutes of angle, or in you know the equivalent yardage or meterage because they're working either yards or meters. Now there's a nice bit on video of my pal Franco using these, basically responding to what I asked for. Me saying, Franco, go to that, go to that, go to that, go to that, and tell me a range on it. And we were actually at what you would call quite exceedingly long range for the UK, to be honest, because um, we were in Colorado, we had mountains, um, and we were looking at mountains in significant distance. So we were well beyond the effective range of these rangefinders, which is all listed in the guide. Let me just see that. To... So how are you doing on the rangefinder up here, Franco, with those? Well, the first, the first line, cops of trees down there, the first one where that goes uh, uh, next to the street, those are 1,200 yards or meters. It's yards, 1,234 yards. See how far it'll give you a reading out to. Okay, let's see, up to down there, we have that sort of uh, station. That station is 1,766 yards. The one all the way down there, you can see That's that. That's actually a mile, 70, 1,760 is a mile. It's a mile, so yeah. we are measuring a mile down where that uh, uh, that uh, fueling station or something like that is. You go, see where the intersection keep, is. Keep going further and see how far you can go. Okay. I've got 1895 yards just above it, the, ro the piece of rocks just above that. Keep going. See how far you can get a return. Well, this is great. 2025 yards. Keep going. Two thousand forty-two. That's the absolute most I can get. Right. If you look down to your right now, Franco, can you see there are two lakes? There's a yes. small one and a far one, which is larger. The far lake is where we were shooting last night and this morning. Can you range find that, please? I'll see if I can. Nope. It doesn't give me a reading. Just give a reading to the trees on the far side of the lake. You getting one? Nope. Right, try the near lake and go for the trees on the far side of the near lake. Okay, I need to get something reflective. So there is a small hunting hut. Let me try that. The little white one? Yes. I'd have thought you'll get a reflection off that tree line. Can I try? 1,633 yards. Oh, that's pretty far then. Can I try? Sure. There you go. I was going against rocks. One thousand six hundred and seventy-three off the bushes just to the right of the near lake. Yep. That's not bad at all, that. 
because it's very bright. Interestingly, we're looking directly down to the path of the sun there, whereas before, when you were getting the further readings, you had the longer path and you weren't into the direct sun. Do you see what I mean? Because that's, that's, that bush down there is illuminated directly by the sun, whereas when you were pointed into the distance on the left, you are into a kind of, it wasn't a shadow, but you weren't into the direct sun position, if that makes sense. It does. Oh, which way around is this going in here? I'm going to guess it's going that way around. I'll pop this back together. And let's just see if that switch is on, or whether it goes boom. I suspect it'll switch on. Yep, it does. So we've got two control buttons. We've got the control button on the top there and the one on the side, which allows us to go in the programming and the menu and things like that. These little damp marks on here, by the way, just a bit of condensation that's formed because it's quite cold today. Um, if I look into this box, boxes which have their own folding genius involved with them, there is a lanyard to go on there, which tucks in through that thing so you can hang it round your neck. Obviously on the front we've got the um, objective lens, we've got the laser system there. Again, threading all around, threading on the bottom for the tripod if you're using that, and we've got plenty of rubber grippiness, various warnings and controls and specifications on the side. You've got diopter focus there to compensate for your own personal eyesight. But the manual is the important part of this, and essentially to cover it in full, this goes through setting it up for your rifle cartridge setting it up to how you want it, meters or yards, angle, angles, inclination, declination, whether you want true ballistic range or whether you want it to give you the actual physical line of sight range to targets. Tells you all about how it calculates true ballistic range here and it explains the reticle, all the other features and functionality of the rangefinder. Now this is a 2800, which I believe in here will specify it's gonna work out to 2800 yards. We were certainly getting good readings well beyond 2000 yards into foliage on a bright day. Air conditions were superb, you know, quite high altitude, very, very, you know, the air was a little bit thinner, certainly nothing in the air, no moisture, no rain, nothing like that. So you could say they were ideal scenario, but of course being bright, most laser range finders actually diminish slightly when it's super bright because there's a lot more light around to confuse the sensors. But essentially, that's going to range find far further than you need to make an accurate shot. I will tell you that. The other thing is the image quality on it, it's very clear. You don't get that awful yellowing that some cheaper range finders do. And this one, I think it said, it said it was just about, was it about 800 pounds did I say, 700 pounds? 700 pounds I think they are. That is a serious piece of kit. And if you aren't necessarily interested in an integrated binocular range finder unit, these are gonna work really well for you. So I was quite impressed and, well, they're gonna get used. I'm gonna do some long range shooting with them. I'm gonna do some hunting with them. And similarly, the binoculars are gonna be accompanying me a lot because although I do have some larger range finding binoculars, I quite like the fact that these are lightweight and a little bit more compact. And I did find them when I used them over there. Because of course, when you get given stuff on a trip, you're giving it back an hour or two later. You can be a little bit careless, but everything, everything is obviously in a bit of a hurry sometimes. So you haven't got time to molly coddle things and it gives them quite a tough, hard test straight away. So there we go. Now there is a ballistics chart in with this range finder and you can pick out which cartridge. You can't probably see this on camera very well because it's quite small letters, but it gives you a whole list of cartridges which you're going to approximate to. We were using setting number four in the menu, which was for a seven millimeter PRC, which is quite a ballistically capable cartridge to be fair, hence the lower number. Um, but there's all sorts of examples here. So for example, you've got 2506 Remington with a 120 bullet. You've got 3006 with a 165. You know, you'll pick and match and whatever you want. Okay, it's not got the individual ballistic setups from its own, you know, applied ballistics calculations, but this is a hunting product. How precise does it need to be in the heat of the moment when you're more than likely taking a shot at not that far away. Now we were told for these pronghorn antelope we might be shooting five, six hundred meters at them or yards. Um, my shot eventually ended up at 200 yards. I think mine was probably the shortest shot any of us took there. The longest shot was about 395 or something like that. So yes, quite a long shot to be fair. And you, you certainly need to correct for a 395 yard shot, but I was pretty good with the point blank range zero at 200, but it's nice to have the capability because especially when you're hunting an, an unusual quarry species that you've no sort of visual reference for size over terrain where you have literally got 
miles and miles and miles and miles and miles of absolutely nothing to scale anything against having a rangefinder with a good reticle system inside and there are multiple reticle choices that you can ping it and know exactly how far away it is it's very reassuring even if your gut feeling's fairly good and my gut feeling was correct i was i had enough time on my hands to make sure i knew my ballistics and the range to touch to the prong on antelope because you know there really wasn't it wasn't the kind of thing you want to mess up on i wasn't paying for this hunt but someone else was and it was actually very expensive um Similarly, using the range finders for the prairie dogs was very interesting because, of course, that's the complete opposite. They weren't that far away, you know, about 225, 230 meters, something like that. But I'd never physically seen one before. I was well aware of them. Obviously, afterwards, you do physically see them because you walk up to them and you see how big they are. It's a bit like a rabbit standing on its, standing on its back end. Um, and of course, you need to you need to get some idea of that and scale it. And because we were using borrowed rifles with a quite significantly powerful cartridge, to be fair for a prairie dog, but again, um, I pretty much shot all mine with a point blank zero technique because a seven millimeter PRC is not moving very much in the sort of ten to fifteen mile an hour winds we're having out to those distances. And when you've got a kind of vertical target like that with no wind issue. Um, other than maybe er left, er right, a little tiny bit. It wasn't that challenging. It was more about holding still on a tripod, but that's a different matter. So those are cool because you could ping the individual prairie dogs and with seven times magnification, that was enough to be able to localize in on them without robbing yourself of all the field of view. And in fact, you get a massive field of view on that. So you went from a very relaxed time spotting with the two tubes of the binocular 10 by 42, swap over to that and you can find them and ping them very easily. Gives the ballistic readout almost instantly if you need it, didn't in this scenario, but that will work as well on deer or rabbits or foxes or whatever you need to shoot one in daylight in the UK. Right, I'm running out of breath now and I certainly need to go and um, number one, enjoy my Haribo, and number two, find out why my ceiling camera keeps turning itself off automatically. But there we go. Right, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, Click the notification bell and keep track of the regular weekly uploads. And remember, your comments on my channel are what drive me to ask new questions of new products. And it's not just about one review of one product. It's a channel. I've got videos of all sorts of products. And that allows you to accumulate knowledge and cross-reference things and allows you to help understand all of the shooting markets going on, all the products going on. It's not just about one product one day and finding out 100% of that data on that product. It's about looking and seeing what I think about products and what I question with all the experience of testing different things and reviewing different things. Sorry, I hate the word testing. All the experience of reviewing different things. It's the questions I ask of a product. So when I see a rangefinder, what will I ask of it? When I pick up binoculars, what will I ask of them? Rifle scope, a rifle, cleaning kit, bags, whatever. Right, thank you for watching. Bye for now.